Singapore is one of the countries with the highest per capita income in the world. According to World Bank data, in 2020, Singapore's per capita income was recorded at $59,790, or around IDR $800 million. This figure surpasses several other developed countries such as Japan, France, and even Germany. Despite its high income, Singapore is a relatively small country in terms of land area. Its total area is only 782 square kilometers, slightly larger than Jakarta, which covers 661 square kilometers. Singapore is also one of the four Asian tigers, along with South Korea, Hong Kong, and Taiwan. The term Asian tigers refers to countries that experienced high economic growth and rapid industrial development from the 1960s to the 1990s. Beyond its highly advanced economy, one of the fascinating aspects of Singapore is its history of land reclamation, which has been ongoing for decades. Land reclamation involves creating new land by filling in coastal or water areas. One of the simplest methods is importing and dumping large rocks or concrete into the water, followed by layers of clay until the desired elevation is achieved. Singapore began coastal reclamation in 1962 to address population growth and economic demands within its limited land area. Reclamation efforts on nearly all of Singapore's coasts have significantly expanded its land area. At the time of its independence, Singapore's land area was just 581 square kilometers. By the 2000s, this had increased to 766 square kilometers, and reclamation is expected to continue until 2035. Reclamation projects require vast amounts of filling material, and for shallow waters around Singapore, sand is the best option. However, Singapore's extensive use of sand for reclamation has depleted its domestic sand resources. As a result, the country has had to import sand from neighboring countries. Unfortunately, as the reclamation process continued, sand became increasingly scarce. In 1997, Malaysia announced a ban on sand exports. A decade later, in 2007, Indonesia followed suit, banning sand exports to Singapore. This ban was triggered by tensions between the two countries over islands in the region, with reports suggesting that sand mining nearly wiped out some islands. At the time, over 90% of Singapore's imported sand came from Indonesia. The bans from Malaysia and Indonesia raised construction costs, forcing Singapore to seek new sources of sand. In 2009, Vietnam joined Malaysia and Indonesia in banning sand exports to Singapore. Cambodia also imposed restrictions, though not as comprehensively as the other countries. While Cambodia allowed the export of marine sand, river sand was no longer permitted to be mined or sold. However, rivers naturally filled with sand deposits near the coast were exempt from this ban. Despite these limitations, Cambodia became a major supplier of sand to Singapore, accounting for 25% of its sand imports by 2010. Cambodia's sand mining led to drastic changes in its ecosystem. By 2010, the Tatai River, exempt from the sand mining ban, began to experience severe ecological damage. Local fish, crab, and lobster populations dropped by 85%, and tourism declined due to increased noise from mining projects. Local residents called for the sand mining to stop. In addition to environmental damage, Singapore's coastal reclamation has had significant geopolitical implications, particularly regarding maritime boundaries between Indonesia and Singapore. The reclamation has caused Singapore's maritime boundaries to shift southward. According to international law, this is permissible as long as the boundaries have not been finalized, allowing Singapore to use new base points from its reclaimed land. However, central maritime boundaries that have been legally established remain fixed and cannot be altered. The reclamation, which has shifted maritime boundaries, benefits Singapore by increasing its land area and territorial sovereignty. Conversely, it poses challenges and losses for Indonesia, highlighting the complex and contentious nature of this issue.